Hi everybody, welcome back to my orchid and plant life. Mainly I talk about orchids. Occasionally I will throw in a couple of videos about a house plant or so. I do do a house plant tour monthly just to kind of get a look at everything. I don't separate the orchids from the house plants. I just throw it all in together. But today we are going to repot my Brassovola or Brassovola, it depends little stars and this is a variation of yasuji takasaki and i purchased this at our local orchid uh, shop here in colorado it is located in Louisville, colorado called fantasy orchids on the 4th of june so it's been a little over six weeks uh, that i've gotten her and she came with lots of growth and is still putting on new growth as you can see got a couple that look like they're going like this one here looked like it was going to spike but then the spike dried up so i'm not sure if it's just not getting enough moisture i have been watering it um once or twice a week as the media dries out but she is pretty compact in there and i do have let's see if i can find it right here i do have one where the spike is continuing so it didn't dry out so i am going to repot her just because as you can see like she is really compacted in there so the brassavola little stars is a cross between the brassavola nodosa and the brassavola and i'm going to chop this up subulifolia subulifolia um, which is sometimes called the cordata as well they're mainly found in central america um, mexico and i think also in jamaica and a lot of people say that they are a lot easier to grow than your average phalaenopsis. They're known as vigorous plants. They are fragrant at night and they are pollinated by a specific moth that is in the area where they originate. It is called the, I think it's the Big Sphinx Moth. If I can find a picture, I'll put a picture up there um, because the flowers are white and to keep it from being pollinated and crossed with another type of flower that it doesn't necessarily work well with uh, this is the only moth that pollinates it they uh, will grow in medium to bright light and i've been keeping mine on my grow shelf along with my cattleya so it's been getting kind of cattleya light underneath a, a, a grow light it's a full spectrum grow light that i've been watering it once or twice a week so like every two to three days and just as a reminder i do grow in my living room so my ambient temperature right now with the ac running is about 40 to 50 percent depending and it also gets supplemental lighting by an east facing window now a lot of people like i was saying with the phalaenopsis say that it is easier to take care of it blooms more readily than a phalaenopsis it grows stronger than a phalaenopsis and the roots on here don't look too bad like there's a lot of dead ones right here in the middle but these on the outside there's a lot of new root activity on the outside and in my june haul video i was saying i would like to see if i could like divide this break a piece off and put a piece on a mount but i don't know if that's going to be a possibility without messing her up so i'll finish cleaning her up and we'll see so let me get this out of the way i had that because i was having i had her soaking in some cow mag just to kind of help her with the transition and sometimes the excess water doesn't always come out. Let me get most of these down here off. So. And as always, I will fast forward through the root cleanup because again, if you've watched any of my other videos on repots, I go through every root. So sometimes it can take a while. I'll also add a link to my repot playlist. If you are like me and you like watching repots, I have quite a few videos on that. All right, well, the fast forwarding will begin here shortly and then we'll come back and look and see what her roots look like.
so this is kind of where we are and once I cut most of those roots from the center part the rest of them are pretty good there were a couple more that were kind of yucky looking like I said when I, once I cut what was in the middle that was gone I it pretty much was clean so it's just all those older roots in the middle and uh, missed a tip here um, like all orchids it does prefer you know good air circulation and as far as fertilizing you should fertilize it with whatever your choice is I use MSU fertilizer um, while it's an active growth now I did read that you should give the Brassavola little stars a two-week rest in the winter when it's not growing but I think that is more dependent on your growing environment um, like in my living room, it's never going to get cool enough or drop in temperature enough. I think for her to slow down, I think she'll continue growing. But maybe if you grow in a greenhouse that does drop temperature in the winter time, maybe that would work. I've never heard that before, but I did read it while I was doing some research on this beauty here. And I am looking and I feel like, do I want to split her or just put her in a pot? I really, really would love to mount a piece of this, but I just don't know right now is a good time because I don't really see a natural split anywhere on here. So I will rinse her off and then we'll look at her again just to see if maybe there is a natural split somewhere once I get everything cleaned up because there is some gunk in between down in the bottom there. Um, and we'll decide then. All right, we'll be right back. I have cleaned her up. I did manage to find a spot where I could divide her. So what I did is I just took this, this piece off of the back here. There is new growth right here. And she has another new growth right there, as well as these new growths in the front. And this one here is pushing out some new roots. So I am going to mount this one. I have two narrow mounts. Not sure which one I'm going to put her on. I will do the mount off camera and then add it at the end. But for now, let's move that to the side. Let's go ahead and pot up the larger division, which has multiple growths. And this is the one that has the one that has the spike that hopefully will go ahead and bloom for me. But if not, I can wait. Um, I know she's blooming size apparently because she's producing the, the buds. She's just not opening them. But she's got multiple, multiple growths on here. So I'm going to set her in the middle of the pot. But let's find a pot. So I do have choices here. And since they do like a wet dry cycle, I will need to get one that has aeration holes. So let me do these two because I think this one is just going to be way too big for it. I do want to put her in a pot that I'm going to be able to keep her in for at least two years, maybe even three. I'm going to put her back in the large bark and large um, pumice that she was in originally. I feel like that is not going to give her enough growth space for the next two to three years with her, the way she's just taken off with the growth. So this one is a little bit wider. Let me just put that one in there so you can, I can show you. It's not much much wider but it is wider and it's not tall and narrow it's flatter that looks like i should be able to give her a little more room in that pot so that is the one i'm going to put her in i mean this is the the mix we're going to use which this is part of the mix that i purchased to have the larger larger pumice for my phalaenopsis experiment and i'll post a video post the video um, in the link as well as above but let's put some of this down at the bottom here. And I always leave my air cone open. So I'll fast forward over putting all of this in there because it, it's gonna get a little bit noisy. And then we'll see what the end result looks like. So let me just get her centered and here we go. All right, well, there she is in her nice pot. The Little Stars is also known as the Lady of the Night. Um, and it's probably because of the 
beautiful, beautiful white flowers with the green petals and sepals in the background. And the Little Stars, I forgot to mention, does resemble in the leaf structure. It's Nadosa parent more than the Subutilifolia. Again, I probably, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm ch chopping that up. Let me pause it for a second. Let me go ahead and mount the other one and then we'll come back with some final thoughts. And here is our end product. So we have this one in the pot. I feel like she's got plenty of room to grow now. And with her liking the wet dry cycle because it is a Cattleya type or in the Cattleya family, it likes that quick dry cycle. So I feel like we are set up for success on this one. And I did manage, as I always try to do, leave one of the roots exposed so i keep an eye on that i'm not going to water her right now because i did have her soaking for quite some time in the cow mag i will let it completely dry out before i water her again and then here is our mount it turned out really nice i put all of the new growth in the front and then i put a little bit of moss i don't have a lot because again wet dry cycle quick wet dry cycle but this way I put it kind of close to all the new growth so that those new roots have something to get into. And then I'm gonna take this because this one here, I don't wanna break it when I'm moving it to water because I know how I am. I am going to take this and I'm gonna loop it through the back here and I'm gonna just tie the end, that end piece off just to help protect it from me more than anything until the new roots grow in and it helps establish itself let's see let's do it this way hold on i did it backwards so i want to go this way with it there we go if i can get it in behind all these growths here on this cork is it stuck on one it is okay there we go and then again, this is just the tomato tie stuff. Let me bring it up just a wee bit. And then this way, it'll help hold it on there and keep it a little more secure, like I said, until the roots grow in and it helps it mature a little bit and make it a little more steady. Let me see. Bring it up just a little bit here. This, it's stuck to the cork here, which is funny. There we go. Do that. And then do it pretty snug there we go and then this way this is protected again from me from when I'm taking it on and off uh, the wall because I'm going to mount it next to my window under a grow light and I won't have the chance of breaking that because I know how clumsy I can be and this is one that also has a new growth on there so I can go ahead and peel that sheath off now that that sheath is nice and dry let's see one two three possibly four four new growths coming and then this new growth is our, is starting off on some root growth and i just want to see which one grows better that's one of the reasons i wanted to put this under a grow light as well because this one will be growing again with the cat layers under a grow light and so this one will also have the same light conditions probably have to water it a little more often because it is on a mount but as far as the fertilization and everything, all that's gonna be the same. So I just wanna see if it'll do better in a pot in my environment, or if it'll do better on a mount, or if it doesn't really matter. Again, these are supposed to be vigorous orchids, and I hope so. And I'm hoping that that one with the spike on it right here, I'm hoping that this goes ahead and blooms. I just really wanna see the bloom, don't we all? But you know that saying, um, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep and then the third year they leap so this is my first year so they might sleep hopefully they'll go ahead and creep and then leap all within the next oh i don't know two months but we'll wait and see all right guys well thank you so much for those of you who've subscribed if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button go ahead and give it a thumbs up while you're down there and leave a comment and we will see you on the next one